Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Last time we addressed the physiological basics of power endurance, why climbers need it and what typical power endurance problems look like. If you haven't seen the episode, check it out here. Today we're gonna address how we can actually improve our power endurance by training indoors. Alright guys, first I'm gonna start with some short talk about the topic as usual, then I'm gonna show you what kind of boulders I created in the gym and what you should consider when you create your own. And finally I'm going to show you what I actually do with these boulders, how I actually train the power endurance on these boulders in order to take a closer look at what we have to pay attention to. Now let me say this right away, if you want to improve your power endurance because you want to get stronger outdoors on the rock, on the rope, then it's probably the best to just do that, you know, climb outdoors, climb on the rock, climb on the rope, do some routes, because it's like with everything in life, you will automatically get good in something that you spend a lot of time with and your body will adapt to this new stimulus as well, as perfectly as possible. Now unfortunately only few people are so privileged that they can go climbing outdoors basically day in day out. A lot of people have jobs and go to uni for studying or other stuff. They are, they, a lot of their time is occupied by other stuff and that's why if they want to keep their current level of power endurance or even improve it, they will somehow have to mimic this stimulus in the local climbing gym that they can attend also during the week, during the uni. Lucky as we are, there are some ways to do this. All we're gonna need is a homogeneously overhanging wall, which is um, densely populated with not too good but not too bad holes. And ideally you can adjust the inclination. So once you've got this, there's a couple of ways how to train power endurance on such a wall. The textbook method, so to say, is doing 4x4s. Four four. That means you pick four different boulder problems, which are about two to four grades be below your max level. And these boulder problems you try to um, do, basically, you try to climb them back to back without resting. That means you're just climbing four boulders, these four boulders. This shouldn't take you more time than five to six minutes or something. Then you rest four minutes and then you do the same thing again. Again, all four boulders back to back. And this whole circuit you are um, repeating four times, which is why the method is called 4x4s, four four, because you make every boulder four times in total. Now in my opinion this method is not too bad, but it's very definite. There is not much room for variation, you know what I mean? What for example happens um, if you fall off from a boulder? Some say you should give this boulder then one more try, or some say you should move on to the next boulder right away. And yeah, that's basically all the, va the variation you get from this. But the advantage is definitely that it's very simple. Everyone can do this, um, just pick four boulders. Essentially you don't even need a homogeneously overhanging wall for this because you can pick four random boulders in your climbing gym regardless whether it's overhanging or not. They just have to be about two to four degrees below your max grade. However, after some experimenting I developed my own method for training power endurance which so far works perfectly fine for me and therefore I create myself six boulders which are class divided by hold types in such way that I have two boulders which are mainly edges, two boulders which are mainly slopers and two more boulders which are mainly pinches. And these boulders consist of not more than 10 moves, they are quite hard, um, I would say two to three grades below my max. And additionally to these six boulders I create myself a circle bowler which I can do laps on. I don't know how I should call it in English, but essentially it's just a bowler which is which consists about 20 moves and 20 moves is one lap. And if I can I can I can climb endlessly on this one, okay? That's the advantage of this. And another advantage is I can also do it in the other direction. Yeah. And yeah, as I said, one lap is about 20 moves. Um, the distance between the holes is not very far. The, the single moves are not hard as all, uh, at all. And the holes are not too bad, but also not jocks or something like that, okay? So it's just to, to build a steady pump, yeah, this round. All right, just let me show you that shortly. And afterwards, I'm gonna show you how I train on that stuff. 
All right, and that's already the first slope bowler here. Um, I made some close-ups to the holes from time to time so that you can imagine how big or how small or how good or how bad these holes are. By the way, I'm using a 45 degree overhanging wall here. The inclination cannot be altered, unfortunately, but I had no problems with that so far. Um, yeah, you just have to work with hole size basically to make the holes harder or easier. And as you can see, um, you have to pay attention to it maybe a little bit, um, the footholds I'm stepping, okay? In the, in the sloper bowlers, I'm stepping hand foot, which basically means I only use those holds as footholds which I already had in my hand before, and no other footholds. The reason I'm doing that in the sloper bowlers is because I had the feeling that it just makes about the right difficulty when I do so. In my other bowlers, as you will see, in my edge bowlers and in my um, pinch bowlers, I'm, I will step just everything, okay? I will go for every foothold. I will give myself the op opportunity to step every foothold on the wall because um, I had the feeling that then they are about the right difficulty, okay? It's just you have to go by your gut a little bit here, okay? You, you need to develop a feeling when a bowler is too hard for your training and when a bowler is too easy for your training. And here we already have the first edge bowler. And what you should pay attention to here is that I never crimp any hold fully, okay? I never go full gas on a, on a hold here. And the reason for that is if you're doing this bowler um, a lot of times back to back okay you're doing a lot of moves you do you would do a lot of full crimps on, on your boulder then you're very prone to injure yourself because the full crimp is just a very aggressive um, way to take a hold and this is very puts a lot of stress on your tendons and joints and stuff okay so you will want to size your holes in the edge bowlers in such way that you do not have to crimp them fully you should have to crimp them half crimp style but not full cream style, okay, in order to reduce risk of injury. And here, as you see, already the second edge bowler. Um, yeah, and as I said before, I use any holds for footholds. This way, that makes it a lot easier, of course. And it has also another advantage. I don't have to search so long for footholds, okay. I am fast with my feet, so I can fully concentrate on my hands, yeah, and increase that pump. That's what we want to train here. We want to train our forearms, not our precision with feet, okay? Here the first pinch bowler. Same thing here. I'm stepping any holds for footholds. Nice close up here. Yeah. And with the pinch bowlers the same. You have to go by gut. Um, if it's too hard or if it's too soft for you, you have to feel it. You have to feel it. And what you may have noticed in this first pinch bowler is that I go straight up very much, a straight up line and the holes are also quite centered. Um, they are over each other and centered. When you do pinches, this increases the force you have to pinch with, of course, because like in this bowler here, in my second pinch bowler, the holes are far apart and a lot to the side. And this way the pinches become more like side pulls, okay? And to have the variety going on, I have one pinch bowler which is quite straightforward, quite um, overall. Um, the, the, the holes are over each other so that I have to pinch hard here. And on the other one, I have more a side pull like pinch bowler where I have to get um, some side pull power essentially to climb it. And this way, you can increase the variety in your power endurance training, okay? And you will homogenize the pump in your forearm. Every little muscle fiber has to be pumped in your forearms and that you only reach when when you're cycling those hold types, all right? And what you can see here is already the first, um, actually the only circle boulder I built here. And yeah, as you can see, the holds are not too bad, but not too good. The holds are not uh, very far apart and I'm stepping again everything in order to make more moves faster, in order to, to give me the ability to be faster with my feet so that I can do the greatest number of moves possible. And yeah, as you can see here, 
not very hard moves. One circle is about 20 moves. It's just ideal for the purples. Yeah? And the big advantage of such a thing is, of course, that you can do it in the other direction as well. As we can see now. Yeah, I think you get the principle, so I time-lapsed this a little bit. And yeah, I think we can move on now to the next chapter. Yeah, so essentially that's my bowlers. That's my seven bowlers I'm going to train with. I do not need more. Um, in a second, we were going to take a look at how we're gonna use these bowlers for power endurance training. First of all, you need to comprehend that right power endurance training is all about the pump. Some say you train the ability to not get pumped although you do a lot of moves and some others say you train the ability to make a lot of moves although being pumped, if that makes sense. In fact, it doesn't really matter because these, do these two things represent the same skill, namely having better power endurance. To train this, I just try to maintain a solid pump during my whole power endurance session. And how I'm gonna do that, I just cycle my um, hold types here. I start off, in this example I'm going to give you in a second, I just start off with the edges bowlers. I climb my first edges bowler. If I manage to do it, I come down right away just for a, for a short chalk up. Um, go into the second edge bowler, try to climb this one. When I manage to do it, I come down again, chalk a little up and try the first one again. And this repeats, repeats, repeats until I fall off. Because at the moment I'm not very fit in my power endurance, I already um, fail at the second go here most of the time during this video. But as I'm going to continue, um, of course I will manage to do more repeats here, okay? Anyway, as soon as I fall off, I'm going um, to take a 3 minute rest and then I start and then I'm going to continue with the second hold type, the slopers. Do the same thing here, going into the first bowler, try to do it, come down again, chalk a little up, try to do the second one when I manage to do it, until I fall off again and take a rest. Let's see what this looks like. Alright, so as I said, we're going to start with edges boulder number one, power endurance training boulder edges one. And let's see if I manage to do it. This is very, um, I'm very fresh here. At the beginning of the session, of course, I do not have any pump here, so I should manage to climb it quite solidly, I think. And as you can see here, um, again, I am stepping any foothold that I like to step and I never crimp any hold fully here and I only use the half crimp in order to prevent injury. And as you can see we managed to top out to top out here quite solidly, running to the wall to the wall again, chalking up and instantly trying edges boulder number two. And let's see how far that one goes. Of course I time-lapsed the rest here a little bit, but all in all it should not take longer than 10 seconds or something. And here I fall off, pump out of it. Taking the chalk back, um, activating my timer, 3 minutes rest now. Chalking up a little bit all the time and then we continue with the second hold type, the slopers. This is the power endurance training boulder slopers 1. As you can see here, big difference, I'm stepping only hand foot, which means only the holes that I had in the hand before are allowed for stepping. This way the boulder is just the right difficulty. And as you can see, quite dynamic moves. Although it's a power endurance training boulder, you can do quite dynamic moves here and hard moves as well, because you're going to get used to it after a lot of sessions. And uh, running to the wall again, Chopping a little bit up, and that's um, our slope of over number two. And I think I'm going to pump out of this now because, yeah, the slopers are my weakness anyway. So, yeah, I'll slip from that one. Had to come down, alright, take the chalk back, activate the timer, three minutes rest, and then we're going to move on to the next hole type. As you can see here, timer is running out, and there we go. Now we are going to climb the pinches, 
pinch pull the number one. And again, take a look at the feet. Here we again step on everything, like in the edges pose. Everything we want for footholds, because then it's just the right difficulty. The puller is just the right difficulty. And if you're doing pinches or edges hand foot, it's going to get quite hard very fast, you know? And that's why I'm just why I just decided to step everything. Okay, managed to do the first one. Run into the wall again, chalk a little up, and do pinches boulder number two. And here we can take a look again at the configuration of these holes. They are more far apart than in pinch boulder number one, and they are in such a way, um, they are placed in such a way that they are more of a side pull, more side pull like here. And this way we get another hole type, another hidden hole type into the training, the side pull. So you don't need to make an extra holder for side pulls, okay? That's not necessary. And here something special happens. I recognize that I don't get um, the pump that I desire. I just want to have a very, very solid pump here all the time during the whole session. And this is when the circle bowler comes into play, okay? Because you can use the circle bowler to increase your pump if you have the feeling that you have not enough of it. Now, my training bowlers are, for me, so far quite hard because I'm still not used to them and this is almost my first power endurance session so I need to get used to my bowls first. And that's why I fail to do the boulders before I really get pumped. And that's of course not the purpose of the training. You want to train the pump. And this is why you um, build yourself a circle bowler where, we, where you can do a lot of moves quite easily. And this way you have the ability to just throw in some pump randomly, okay? When you fall down from your hard bowlers too early, you just step on the circle bowler, do some moves until you pump out of that one, and then you can be sure you have a lot of, you have a shitload of pump in your forearms there. I know there for sure that I'm pumped as hell. And here we go, three minutes rest again, and then we start again with our um, edge bowlers, all right? But this time I of course start with edge pull 2 and do the edge pull number 1 afterwards because before I managed to do the edge pull number 1 and failed on edge pull number 2. So this one I aimed to do edge pull number 2 and <laughs> fail on edge pull number 1 <laughs> as we will see. But anyway, you should cycle these things through as well of course to get the maximum variety into your training if that makes sense. All right, and here edge boulder number one, as we said. Yeah, and as you can see, I'm really pumped here already. I barely managed to stick that move, but then I pumped out. But to add some more pump to the whole thing, again, doing the cycle boulder, okay? The circle boulder. And there we go, this time in the other direction to increase the variety again and as you can see here I'm already pretty weak we should um, keep in mind these moves are not really hard for me normally but I'm already really slow and I still don't know my footholds perfectly on that one because as I said before I didn't train a lot um, on these boulders in general so far so I'm not used to them but yeah this is going to let your forearm blow up, I guarantee you. <laughs> Alright, pumped out. Uh, I'm already a little bit, a little bit uh, delusional here. <laughs> and here, just a short demonstration of the incredibly solid pump that we produced here. Alright! I hope I could give you a little insight on how to train power endurance in the climbing gym indoors and how I train the power endurance in the climbing gym indoors when I don't have the possibility to go outdoors on rock where it's probably the best um, way to train power endurance for rock climbing. But anyway, 
By the way, there are also methods for campus boarding and hang boarding, which are very, let's say, power endurance focused. Uh, maybe I'm going to dig into that once in uh, future video videos. And as always, I'm always interested in your opinion. Do you have any different methods for training power endurance? Then please tell me in the comments down below. And like, share, subscribe um, if you got something from this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye!